Hi, I'm Robert Osborne. Every Monday since September 2nd in primetime on TCM, we've been premiering a new chapter in the 15-part documentary series, The Story of Film and Odyssey. Well, tonight we have the fifth installment, which brings us up to the post-World War II movies of the 1940s. And back with me, as he has been each week, is the writer, director, and narrator of the series, Mark Cousins. Welcome back, Mark. Thank you, Robert. Interesting era this is, yep. the 1940s. and the war going on in Europe and the emergence of people like Orson Welles and Billy Wilder and all that. Is this a favorite era of yours? I think this is a great era. Yeah. You know, you, you can see cinema around the world. Complicated era. Complicated. You could say that cinema before this had an element of fantasy about it, mm -hmm. a pure escapism, you know. But here, in this period, 1939 on, onwards, movies darken visually and morally. So we get, we start to see all these great film noirs, you know, where there's loads of shadows, you know, and flawed heroes and, and tragic endings. Mm -hmm. uh, and Beginning of film noir. Film noir. And yeah. uh, Orson Welles comes along and shows us that Movies don't only have to have shallow focus, you can have really, really deep focus, you know, and... and Show ceilings. Ceilings and, and things like that. And this combination of uh, visual and moral darkness is really exciting. But if you go to Europe, where, of course, which was in ruins in 1945, mm -hmm. you come across Italian neorealism, and it completely... Which changed the course of history. Changed the course of, of movie history. Suddenly, they had this word de-dramatized, you know, Hollywood had been about dra drama, hadn't it? It had been excitement. But the Italians said, no, let's de-dramatize. Let, let's make films about everyday life. A guy who gets his bike stolen, a children who shine shoes, etc. But weren't they also kind of forced into that? Because they didn't have sets. They didn't have money to build you know, sound stages and do all that. Exactly. They had to go out in the street and do it. But it's in like, doing what that, do we have? What do we have? We've yeah. got a simple camera. We've got no lights. In doing that, yeah. they created this whole new art form and yeah. changed the yeah. course of our movies yeah. in Hollywood as well. And what they what they decided was that every ordinary life is interesting. Mm -hmm. You know, Alfred Hitchcock famously said, cinema is life with the boring bits left out. And they said, well, no, no, no. What you think is boring, an ordinary woman cooking food or something, if you look carefully enough, this is exciting. This is real life. This is drama as well. So that was new mm -hmm. and that challenged the conventional way of storytelling. So mm -hmm. it's, filmmakers, especially in Hollywood, had to up their game. Alfred Hitchcock made a film like Wrong Man far more serious than what he had done before. So even filmmakers who hadn't been in World War II responded to these changes mm -hmm. and made less, you could say, frivolous pictures as a result. Was there one person more than any other, in your opinion, who was the most influential on this era? I think that, I think you have to mentioned Billy Wilder here. He's a European, he comes to the US. He's a cynic anyway, in the best sense. He doesn't believe in the, the hero exactly. You know, he believes in the anti-hero, but he, he's such a brilliant technician that he starts to make films that have got a European sensibility, but with all the Hollywood equipment. Right. And, and he knew make, how to entertain. He knew how to entertain. Same time. Yeah. And you, you make Double Indemnity, you make Sunset Boulevard. I remember seeing Double Indemnity when I was a boy and just loved its piercing, triple distilled, like, e expresso hit. Whew. Here was something that I hadn't seen before. Mm -hmm. And so what Billy Wilder, I think, is really central to this period. Mm -hmm. But then if you look at the end of this period, in Britain, you get a film like The Third Man, mm -hmm. which has got so, it tells you so much of 1940s cinema. It's quite morally serious. It's visually very deep, that famous ending where a person walks like this towards the camera. And it's sort of like a focal point. It tells you a lot about the 1940s, a great era. Well, let's take a look. Here's the TCM premiere of the fifth installment in the documentary series, The Story of Film and Odyssey, subtitled The Devastation of War and a New Movie Language. 